Research over the last decades has shown us that calorie restriction extends the lifespan of almost every model organism was tested on. Which is great news if you're a worm, a fly or a mouse. But to deduce from it that it works in humans is a big step. Now of course, being overweight is associated with a shorter life. But let's assume you're healthy and of a normal weight and you just want to find out ways on how to extend your life and especially your health span and you have read that calorie restriction may do this. But being calorie restricted your whole life is a huge commitment that might just make your life feel longer because you're constantly waiting for your next meal. So let's look at the whole scientific picture to find out whether calorie restriction could actually extend lifespan. About 11 years ago, a study found that when monkeys ate 30% less calories, they lived significantly longer. These were exciting news since monkeys are much closer related to us than mice and eat a diet that is somewhat more similar to our diet. However, shortly after, a parallel study using the same monkeys found that calorie restriction had no effect on mortality. In fact, the median survival of the monkeys on 30% less calories was slightly less compared to the control group. If I would be one of those monkeys from the second study, I would be really pissed, always hungry for nothing. Anyways, there are some differences between the two studies. And the biggest one is probably that in the study where calorie restriction apparently extended the life of the monkeys, the monkeys were actually eating a diet that is somewhat similar to eating McDonald's 24-7. 29% of their calories were coming from sucrose in the first study, while sucrose comprised only 4% of the monkey diet in the second study. In fact, the study where calorie restriction didn't show an effect, the monkeys were eating a fairly natural diet. So these studies suggest that when your diet is shit, you better do calorie restriction. But if your diet is okay, there may be no benefit to it. It is not necessarily bad news that cutting calories doesn't extend lifespan, as long-term calorie restriction simply also doesn't work well for us free-living humans. To give you an example, during the famous Minnesota starvation experiment, 36 men were fed only 1500 calories per day for 6 months and the participants experienced muscle wasting, depression and other mental issues. One subject even amputated 3 fingers of his hand with an axe, though the subject was unsure if he had done so intentionally or accidentally. However, there seems to be a good alternative to calorie restriction. Enter the fasting paradox. In 1965, Angus Barry lost 276 pounds by virtually eating nothing for 382 days. During his fast, his blood sugar levels dropped to a level that is normally considered as dangerous. However, his doctor noted that despite the hypoglycemia, the patient remained symptom-free, felt well and walked about normally. The reason why Angus could go for so long without food is because his metabolism switched from glucose to ketones. But more about this in a second. Cycles of fasting and refeeding are currently studied for their effects on reversing or preventing disease as well as for extending life and health span. There is a very good reason why we humans are so well adapted to fasting. It is because for about 95% of human history we lived as hunter-gatherers and eating frequent meals was nearly impossible. So there are at least three potential mechanisms on how fasting may boost longevity. Fasting leads to the production of ketone bodies, which have positive health effects. And recent data shows that ketogenic diets extend the lifespan of mice while low-fat diets fail. Ketone bodies are also the reason why we humans often tolerate not eating at all better than calorie restriction even if this sounds paradoxical. Our body eventually switches from glucose to ketones as the primary source of energy, which is also the reason why Angus felt well despite his hypoglycemia. Ketone bodies can be produced from our own fat storage and can even 
contribute to about 70% of the energy requirement for the brain. An organ that many people still think completely relies on glucose as energy source. Fasting also stimulates autophagy, a process important for getting rid of cellular junk. In fact, transient feeding of old mice with autophagy-inducing molecule rapamycin significantly extends their lifespan, even when calorie restriction fails, showing the power of autophagy here. And the third mechanism on how fasting boosts longevity is because it increases the release of the human growth hormone. The human growth hormone is important for fat burning and preserving lean muscle mass. Unfortunately, levels decline during aging, which is one reason why some people take it as an anti-aging drug, with Dr. Life being the most famous example here. And yes, it's his actual name. Studies also found that human growth hormone supplementation of men between 61 and 81 years of age significantly increased their lean muscle mass and bone density and decreased fat tissue. The human growth hormone also leads to an increase in IGF-1 levels. And depending whom you're asking, people will tell you that IGF-1 is important for lean muscle mass and acts as a neurotrophic factor. But other people may tell you that high IGF-1 levels may increase the risk for certain cancers. Okay, let me ask you the following. How much longer do you think would humans live if we could cure cancer today? Would you think we could live 10 years longer? Maybe 15 years? Well, no, actually not we could just live about three years longer. And what if we could cure cancer, heart diseases, stroke and diabetes today? How much longer would we live? Only about 13 years longer. As Professor Walter Longo puts it, if one, one disease, disease doesn't, doesn't get you, something else will. Harvard professor David Sinclair also emphasized this point in his book Lifespan. He argues that the most efficient way to increase lifespan is to combat aging directly, not just age-related diseases. Now a recent trial gave volunteers human growth hormone supplements and found that the treatment reversed epigenetic aging and immunosenescent trends. If you don't know what epigenetic age means, click on the link here. I will also make a video soon about immunosenescence, but it basically means that while we age, our immune system becomes less functional, which can lead to an increased risk for cancer, infections, and all kinds of inflammatory diseases. When we look at the aging research, it's important to remember that we are not lab animals. For us free-living humans to live long and especially to live healthy, it's important to have a well-functioning immune system, not only to fight off cancer and infections, but also to prevent any modern diseases. And it is equally important to have strong bones and strong muscles to avoid any pain and discomfort later in life. Now, while calorie restriction may seem to increase the life and health span of lab animals, I don't think it's very suitable for us humans. However, on the other hand, I think that fasting is a very beautiful approach here to extend life and health span as it cleans up any cellular junk, it activates temporally stress response pathways, and it leads to a switch in metabolism. Thank you for watching. Sit down.